been a few days now since the release of Windows 10, one of the biggest events in the tech calendar this year, so it would be crazy for me to not make a video about it. This video is going to be slightly more relaxed than your traditional videos you might find around YouTube at the moment regarding Windows 10. All I'm going to do is highlight some of the key features that stood out to me on my first few hours of use. I'm going to go over some things that maybe could do with a bit of improvement and some things that I think are spot on. The black bar at the bottom of the screen. Enough said really. The new taskbar at the bottom of the screen is a low profile way to manage all of your applications. Honestly, the first five minutes of using Windows 10 made me think perhaps I've made a mistake. However, I have to admit it is growing on me. Something I hated about Windows 8 was the fact that when you press the start button, and I use that term very loosely, you would automatically be booted into a full screen module and forced to use the Windows environment Microsoft's way. But praise the Lord, this has finally been changed. Now what we get in place of the previous spam fest is a nice and clean hybrid of both a clean old school start menu as well as the tiles previously found in Windows 8. If for some reason you did actually like the tiles in Windows 8, I can't think for the life of me why, you can actually expand the start menu to view all of your tiles again and have the start menu take up a large majority of the screen. But you wouldn't really want to do that, would you? It also means you don't actually have to awkwardly move the mouse to the top right of the screen to bring out that silly side menu that sometimes worked, but most of the time didn't. Cortana is finally here too. This was the main reason that I went to all the trouble of downloading and installing the Windows Developer Preview. However, it wasn't until the very end releases that you were actually able to use and see Cortana for itself. What is 412 divided by 3? That makes approximately 137.33. What is the meaning of life? I've heard from a reliable source that the answer is 42, but still no word on what the question is. Remind me to put the bins out and walk the dog tomorrow at 3 o'clock. All right, remind you to put the bins out and walk the dog at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Open Firefox. All right. Opening Mozilla Firefox. I feel that despite Cortana being quite powerful and very good at recognising what I'm saying, it's still missing some core features you would expect. For example, it's crazy to me that despite Microsoft owning Skype, one of the biggest communication apps in the world, you cannot currently use Cortana to call a friend on Skype. The only way you can make a call is by using Windows Phone. Next up, we're going to talk about the Task View button at the bottom left of the screen. This is used if you're like me and you often have loads of apps open, but then you Alt-Tab and find that one document or website you're looking for is buried under everything else. Microsoft attempts to make our life a little bit easier by introducing this button. When you click it, you will see all of the apps open in the background, which allows a much better way of managing them. I only wish that you could actually move these round and add some form of customization, as it would make it a lot easier to use. For example, I had problems on a dual screen setup. Using this task view, you could not actually move the task view windows around on a multi-screen setup. But obviously, this is just released software. I'm sure this is going to change and new features are going to be added and things like that. My unexpected favourite feature is without doubt the ability to create virtual desktops. That means if you ever have a similar setup to me in terms of video editing and web browsing, on one desktop, quote unquote, you could have everything you need to create a video, such as Sony Vegas to edit the video and Photoshop to create the thumbnail. And then, alternatively, you could have a whole new desktop experience set up for light web browsing, such as Facebook and YouTube. Now, I'm sure you all remember the Snap tool from Windows 8. Well, now Snap Assist has been added. Again, it makes your life very, very simple by allowing you to simply drag the application you want to the left or right hand side and then you'll have the ability to choose which window appears next to it. So if you can see on my screen now we have BBC News open in the new Edge browser. So if we drag this to the left, you'll see now we have a choice of opening Skype or Google Chrome or Camtasia with that instead of having to manually have the tab open nearby to snap it to the right. And there we have it, that's pretty much all my favourites so far on Windows 10. Obviously if anything major happens or I come across some revolutionary thing in Windows 10, I'll definitely make a video about it. However, if you're eager to try Windows 10, 
There is a link to both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions in the description below. However, as with every piece of software, it is usually wise to wait about a month before installing it. This way you give Microsoft or whoever develops it a chance to iron out all the bugs. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.